Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So once again, another SWI coming at you guys. And this time we're going to be talking about none other than a phone that I probably should have been talking about a long time ago. And that phone is the LG V40. Now, this is the first time I'm ever reviewing it, the first time I've ever held it. And I'll be honest, this phone kind of blew my expectations in a lot of ways. And even though it's not even that old of a phone, it's about a year old, it's still pretty impressive to see where we're at now than when this phone came out because as you guys know, LG has their regular line, their LG G, whatever, but they also have this line, which I would consider more of like the pro line of their phones or more so like the Note line. They're usually more expensive and they're just overall better phones than, than where they came previously. But even though this phone is supposed to be the top tier LG phone at a time, this phone, they did so many weird things with it that I honestly don't really understand where their point was a couple times. But I think it's definitely a super cool competitor. And to see the depreciation of this phone as well, I mean, this phone has depreciated so much, yet it still holds so much value in my opinion. And to start off, I mean, looking at the front, we have a 6.4 inch P OLED display. This one is 1440p by 3120 with 537 pixels per inch. And honestly, it's not a bad phone at all in terms of the panel. I was looking at it and I honestly could not tell if it was an IPS or not because I'm so used to seeing LG use IPS panels. But after using it for a little bit, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is definitely OLED. But again, I couldn't tell if it was 1440p or not until I actually looked it up. But I think it's a decent panel, but I just think, I don't know, something's off about it. Maybe it's the coloring or the color accuracy or whatever, because in my opinion, it kind of does look like an LCD panel, but it's not bad at all. And that's kind of like a minor thing. You have kind of a little bezel around it. You know, it's not a completely bezel-less device, but it reminds me more of like an iPhone XR type of bezel around it. You also have the notch up top with two camera sensors. And it's kind of funny because the two camera sensors are on the left and then you have the speaker on the right of it. So they didn't really put it in the center. They could have done a Pixel 3 XL kind of thing where they put it on two separate sides, but I guess it's whatever. It's kind of like a goofy little thing, but it's really not that big of a deal. And I don't think really anybody cares about it. A cool thing about this phone is that it does have a headphone jack with USB type C, which a lot of people might not even care about it anymore, but still having that headphone jack is a really cool thing. And having a USB type C port is also an awesome thing. And this phone has both. Now looking on the back, you have a triple camera setup as well as a fingerprint sensor, which I love the fingerprint sensor and I love triple camera setup. And that's honestly really, really cool. Eventually we saw like the Galaxy S10 bring a triple camera setup, but this one that came out a couple months before it actually had it, which is awesome. And I love seeing those type of things. And looking at the overall build quality, it's definitely a premium feeling phone in my opinion. It feels like a very premium phone. I don't feel like it's about to bend or break or anything. You have glass on the back as well. And I think this phone feels like a solid piece of machinery. It doesn't feel like some cheap phone. It feels about as premium as a Galaxy S10, I would say. The chassis of the LG 40 isn't really that good, but everything else about this phone seems pretty premium and it feels definitely like a pretty durable phone in my opinion. And that pretty much covers up everything on the outside. Now hitting on the software side of things, this thing was released with Android 8.1. It did eventually get Android Pie and you are able to, I guess whenever Android Q comes out, you will be, and LG makes it, they will eventually port it over to the V40 as well. So this phone should be getting Android 10. I think it's going to stop there. I don't think it's gonna go any further than that. Now there's a possibility it might get Android 11, but I doubt it. But I think there is a little bit of a development community behind this phone. So that's a really good thing. I love seeing development for these specific phones. And honestly, this phone software isn't horrible, but like, I feel like LG does so many weird decisions with their phones. Like if they just kind of took a more stockish approach, I feel like it'd be really great. They kind of did like a Xiaomi and Huawei kind of thing where they just like skin the whole entire thing and they don't need to do that. Like who are they trying to go for? It makes absolutely no sense. I feel like there's just a bunch of random people who are, I feel like there's just a bunch of random people who are like, oh my God, this is what people want, but nobody wants this type of software. Their stock software isn't good. You have to go and like completely skin it over and everything. And honestly, if I don't think there's a, that big of a community behind this thing in terms of development, but if there was, I would probably even just port over it and custom ROM a phone and custom ROM this phone, then even keep the stock ROM, even if it was still supported because it's just not that good of an OS. And that's one of the biggest disadvantages of this phone, in my opinion. I just don't like LG software at all, but you can always, you know, skin it and do whatever you want with it. There's a lot of different options and advantages with having an Android device, like putting another launcher on it, which is really nice. And that'll help out the overall experience really well. Now that kind of covers up everything on the software. One important thing, this phone is IP68 dust and water resistance. So that's a really cool thing. But this thing also has a micro SD card slot, which is awesome. So even though the top tier storage model is only 128 gigabytes, you still have the micro SD card slot so you can expand it whichever way you want to. So a couple of things I kind of forgot to mention, but I'll hit on those right now. Now, moving on to the performance side of things, this is where things are actually pretty good in my opinion. You have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipset, an octa-core CPU, an Adreno 630 GPU, 
with six gigabytes of RAM on both the models. Like I said, the top tier model is only 128 gigabytes, but you can always expand it with expandable storage. Now, in terms of performance, what I can tell you is this thing is still a very good performing device in my opinion. Like I was going through so many things with this device and it might not look like it, but sometimes when I'm just on my phone, you know, recording, Sometimes before I even record it, I just go mess with it and just see what, what's going on with it. It feels like a very snappy and, you know, fast device. And right now I am on Android Pie. Whenever Android Q comes out for this thing, that's when I'll, you know, install it. But when messing with it, dude, it feels like a very good device and it's really fast. You know, animations are smooth. When I'm opening something and I click it, it's almost instantaneous. And it feels like a very, you know, smooth phone. The only thing I hate about it is that whenever I click on something, the screen is so sensitive that I feel like I click on something else like four or five times, but it's a very fast phone and very quick and snappy, which I really love seeing. And that's even like with the more minor apps, when I go and take it up a notch and play like games and stuff, again, perfectly fine. I didn't even see any stutters. Wheel Racing 3, which is a kind of intensive game. I'm not going to say it's super intensive, but kind of intensive. And that game ran perfectly fine, which I loved seeing. And I'm surprised that really nobody talks about this phone because like nobody really talks about LG phones anymore. It's all like OnePlus and iPhones and Samsungs. But this phone, in my opinion, I'm surprised by the performance of this thing. And I kind of want to start comparing this to other phones too. And I know the V50 just came out, so I'm curious to see how fast that phone is. But I had the V30 and the V20 and even the V10. And those phones are really good as well. But this phone is really surprising to me. I wasn't expecting it to be this fast, but it is. And that's really, really cool. So ultimately in terms of performance, this thing is still holding up. And if and when it does get Android 10, I'm curious to see if that affects the performance at all. I doubt it will. I think it'll probably help it, but Android 10 is in a crazy update, but I really want to see gestures on this thing. I was going through settings and I wasn't able to see if there's any gestures that I can use on this thing. So that might be just the Android 10 feature that's coming. Cause I know Android 10, you know, has it on, on stock, but if this thing had gestures, that would be really, really cool. So maybe it does maybe it doesn't i might have to tinker around with the settings a little bit but ultimately what i can tell you in terms of performance ultimately what i can tell you in terms of performance it's a very very good performing device still more than i thought every time i go into this phone i'm like wow this is actually not that bad now it's not the fastest phone in the world i'm not gonna sit here and say it's like amazingly crazy but for what i was expecting and for how much i even pay for this thing it's not that bad in my opinion at all and it's actually very good and moving on to the camera sensors this thing like i said has a triple camera setup on the back two 12 megapixel sensors and a 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor and looking at the phones that even came out this year the samsung galaxy s10 note 10 11 pro max those phones have almost the same setup as this you know the standard lens the telephoto lens and the ultra wide sensor and this phone has all of those things and the really awesome thing about this phone is that you can do 4k at up to 60 frames per second with a google pixel 4xl you are not able to do that. You cannot do 4K 60 frames. So maybe the Pixel 4 XL has better camera sensor overall, like better image quality and everything. But this phone has the option of you going up to there, which is awesome. So what I can tell you here is that when I'm taking a photo on this thing and when I was messing with the camera, it was very good. It's a very good sensor. And the fact that this thing has a triple camera setup, I think that's the best thing about it. I love seeing that. And if this thing only had a dual camera setup, it would be very, very average. But seeing where we're at now with cameras and seeing where we were just a year ago, this thing has held up quite well in terms of the camera sensors. And looking on the front, 8 megapixel sensor, standard lens, and a 5 megapixel wide angle lens, that's really cool as well because you can get more people into photos and there's a lot of phones in the market still that don't have that capability. So this phone in terms of the camera sensors is killer. I love this phone a lot in terms of the cameras. It might not be the best camera, but the camera sensors are there. So you have that ability to, you know, use at your leisure, if you will. So the camera has a thumbs up for me. Now, moving on to the probably the worst thing about this phone. It was almost perfect except the battery life, you know. LG, for some reason, they put a 3300 million power battery on this thing. I don't know what they were thinking. They should have just put like a 4000 million power battery on this thing at the least. I mean, seriously, if you're going to be honest, 3300 million powers for a phone like this is not that much. They should have expanded it. They should have done something else in my opinion. But the fact that they did that, I don't know what they were thinking, dude. This phone is super fast. This phone has a very great screen, a big screen, OLED, 1440p, but they only did 3,300 million powers. I don't know what they were thinking. It does have wireless charging, which is nice, but at the end of it, they should have done something with it. They should have at least put, I mean, the Note 10 has a 3,500 million power battery. The 11 Pro Max has a 3,900 million power battery. And even though this phone came out before those, they still should have done something. It doesn't have a removable back or anything, so... In my opinion, the battery life is probably the worst thing about it. It's less than average, and if they just increased that battery size, they could have easily had a hit on their hands, in my opinion. And to kind of sum up the whole entire thing, dude, to be honest, 
there's so many pros of this phone. There are so many amazing things about it. I've only really seen like really, really great things when I'm using it. The build quality is awesome. The fingerprint sensor, micro SD card slot, screen, performance, everything is so good that it's really hard to find bad things about it. But really the only negative thing is the battery life. And if you can get over that and the software, I think this is a tremendous phone for a lot of people. Like I said, it's not the best phone. The Note 10 beats this thing, the 11 Pro Max beats this thing, Galaxy S10 Plus beats this thing, but for the amount you're going to pay for this thing, you still keep the headphone jack, USB Type-C, fingerprint sensor, so much, and to be completely honest, I think this phone is a tremendous value per dollar. You can pick one up for like maybe like $300, maximum $400, but not even. You can pick one up for like $300. I picked mine up for like $200 something or $300 something, and this thing is just depreciating more and more every day, so... It's a very good phone, in my opinion, for the price. And if you can pick one up, if you're looking for a phone, I think this is definitely a hit, in my opinion. I'm surprised. I wasn't expecting this thing to be as good as I thought it was going to be. The V30 was good. The V20 was okay, too. But this phone is definitely, a, this thing is definitely a good value per dollar, in my opinion. So that kind of covers it. If you guys have any questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button. That would mean so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also, check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. All those links are linked down below. I really appreciate if you guys could check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.